My wife and I were doing a cross-country trip from Maryland to Los Angeles, so we were taking I-70 across the country. We would be stopping in Missouri, Colorado, and Utah on the way, then taking the 15 down. We were going to see my cousins in Missouri, but after that we would be in uncharted territory, exploring new places we had never seen. We stopped by St. Louis and saw the Arch and downtown, then off to St. Charles where my cousins lived. They had a big family, so it was always a party over there, since my seven cousins had five to seven kids each. We had dinner at their house, stayed the night, and left the next day. We drove through Kansas, which is really flat. It is so flat that you can't tell if you're going 70 or 100 miles per hour. We got through Kansas and into the Rocky Mountains, and this is where we started having some trouble. I guess the 2009 Prius is not compatible with the Rocky Mountains, because I was pedaled to the floor and was only able to get up to 55 miles per hour, and I had to stay in the right lane the whole time. The car was making an intense, revving sound, and I was afraid it was going to blow up or something. It was starting to snow, and I was really worried if we were going to make it through the Rockies. Suddenly, my car just shut off, and we had to immediately merge over to the shoulder. It was a good thing we were in the right lane already. Merging over from the left lane would have been catastrophic. I get out and look at the car, but I know nothing about this hybrid. All I know is it won't turn on. I look under the hood, and it looks fine to me, like everything is plugged in. Beyond that, I know nothing about this stuff. I call a tow truck to pick us up. At this point, we're at some small town by Walcott called Edenville at an auto repair shop. The repair guy says he's going to have his electric vehicle guy come by in the morning to check it out and for us to come back in the morning. I guess we are staying here for the night. We look for a hotel and notice that there are flyers all over for a festival tonight. That's cool and all that there's a festival, but we're going to need to find a hotel first. We find one and try to get a room. The woman at the front desk asks if we are in town for the Lunar Festival. We tell her no, and she asks why we decided to stop by on this particular day. We told her our car broke down and that we were on our way to Los Angeles. She gave us a look up and down and told us not to go to the festival, that we would not be interested. We said okay, like we wanted to go anyways and went to the room but because of that interaction we were both now very intrigued about the festival why would she tell us not to go what was going on with that night fell on the town and we had nothing to do so we ended up following the other townspeople to the festival I know right once we got there we saw multiple bonfires and people dancing There was music, and it seemed to be a fun time. However, the music was interrupted by an announcement from a man on top of a large rock. He was up there pretty high. It was probably about 50 feet or so. He told everyone, thank you for coming. The health of our town is all thanks to you all. You are all healthy, and that keeps us to maintain our great traditions. But when you get old and can no longer help, You must take the leap of faith to move on in your journey. Suddenly, an old woman appeared next to him on the rock. She was crying for some reason. He said more stuff about sacrifice, and then suddenly threw the woman off of the rock. My wife and I realized that we had made a big mistake. We started to slowly back away, hoping no one would notice. We managed to get away, and took some dark alleys to make it back to the hotel. We saw the same lady at the front desk. She started to question us about where we were just at. We told her we were just out for a walk, and she started to stare at us, trying to figure out if we were full of shit or not. She seemed to be satisfied and backed off, wishing us a good night. We got in the hotel room and locked the door. A few hours went by, and there was a knock at the door. We were not going to answer it, that's for sure. We didn't know anyone in this town, 
so whoever was knocking at the door was not there for us, or there for a good reason. Time to find out, that didn't matter though. The door was kicked off its hinges, and a group of big guys grabbed us, putting hoods over our head. We found ourselves in the vehicle going somewhere, but couldn't see anything. I told my wife, it's going to be okay, but I was lying. I knew we were in trouble. We were taken out of the vehicle and walked up a steep incline, the hood still on our head. We finally stopped, and the hoods were taken off. We were on top of the cliff that we saw from earlier. The crowd was naked for some reason and yelling at us. We had intruded on the ritual and needed to pay. We were thrown from the cliff and died on impact. If someone tells you not to go to a festival in a small town because it's not for you, you might want to listen to them. A few of us were driving to Las Vegas from Ridgecrest and decided we wanted to see Death Valley along the way. So we were all going to drive through Death Valley to get to Vegas, rather than traditional highways. This would have been an exciting trip, if only things didn't go wrong like they did. We get a rental car, a Toyota Camry, and start driving. The plan is to take Highway 178 to Panamint Springs and get on Highway 90 to go through the actual Death Valley Park, then take Highway 95 to get to Vegas. We started our trip by seeing a sign in Frona for monthly rent at $299. That was amazing, but also, who wants to live out here? Probably not a lot of people. We were driving and saw other cars around, probably looking at some unique desert stuff. We saw some awesome sand dunes along the way, and stopped the car to get a closer look. The dunes were the same ones from Star Wars, come to find out. There were other travelers there as well. We got some great pictures of us walking to the top of a dune peak. After all that, we got back in the car and went further into Death Valley. We started to see plenty of abandoned buildings along the way, probably from the gold rush days. I noticed that the amount of cars started to thin out. Signs of civilization were disappearing, and we were starting to lose our cell phone signal. Luckily, we did have a physical map just in case, and we pulled it out to chart our course. The radio was also intermittently coming in, so we turned it off and just started talking. Everything was fine until we saw the radiator temperature was starting to overheat. We did not plan for something like that, but it was 126 degrees outside. We all looked at each other very concerned. We could either keep going and hopefully it does not overheat, or we could pull over and hope it cools down. Unfortunately, the decision was made for us. Smoke started pouring out of the engine area, and we had to pull over. We came to a stop, and all got out of the car. We surrounded the pulled up hood, and observed the radiator just spewing steam and water. I checked my cell phone, and it was surely not receiving signal. What could we really do? We were out in the middle of nowhere. There was nothing in sight, and it was hotter than I ever could have imagined. We had to find shade. The car was too hot, so we couldn't just stay in there. We wrote a note on the car and told whoever found it that we were going east to find shade and left our numbers just in case. We were walking and talking with each other when I swear I heard someone talking. I told the guys to stop talking for a minute and we listened. We heard a voice very faintly say, This way. We all laughed. We heard something like, Come this way, but that's impossible and silly. We continued to go down the trail and came across a shack. This would work for now. We could at least escape the heat. We opened the door to the shack and we were hit with the worst smell ever. The shack was red all over, with flies and maggots on fleshy pieces of something. We looked around for just a minute, and we saw something that resembled a human skull. We looked further and saw a set of ribs, hands, and feet. 
This was all parts of a human being. We started to back away when we heard a voice from the distance. Hey, what are you doing here? We were safe enough as the burly man was pretty far away, but we got scared when we heard footsteps coming quick on the trail that we used to get here. Someone was coming towards us. We ran the opposite way we came and found another shack with the door open. There were a big pile of keys here, and we saw that there were key fobs that looked undamaged. We grabbed a handful and ran out the door. We started hitting the lock button and running around, hoping to hear something. We heard a beep from one of the fobs and ran towards the noise. We ran over the hill where the beeping was coming from, and we saw something disturbing. It was a sea of cars. We saw the car we had the fob for and got in, praying it would start. It started, and there was a half a tank of gas. We floored it and got out of there. On our way out, we passed by a tow truck that had our rental car on it and was headed to the car graveyard. The disfigured man driving the tow truck stared at us all the way out of eyesight. We got back on the road and turned around. We made it back to Ridgecrest and went to the police, telling them what we saw and where. A deputy in the back of the room was quiet for a while. Then he finally said something to break his silence. People go missing out there all the time. I try to tell people, but they just don't listen. Out there, there's no civilization. Just survival. You have seen the desert people that live in Death Valley. We hear stories like this. We go out there and try to find them. And find the same thing as always. A bloody shack. A shack with a pile of keys. And a sea of cars. They will relocate and do it again. We can never find them. All you can do is never go out there past stovepipe wells. Take the freeway like a normal person. Josh, Rick, and I were driving through Oklahoma on our way to Phoenix, Arizona. Oklahoma is known for its tornadoes, so of course, fate had decided to give us an experience of a lifetime. No one in our group was from the state, and we had no idea what was about to happen to us. We were on Interstate 40, going towards Weatherford, when the weather started turning dark. The normal bright blue sky had a very dark and ominous look, with thick clouds coming overhead. There were streaks of lightning and roaring thunder across the landscape. We had heard weather reports of four tornadoes descending on our location. We saw one funnel from the distance in front of us. It was a real tornado, and this was getting way too crazy. I asked Josh if I should pull over at the next rest stop. But he looked over to where the rest stop was, and he saw an even bigger tornado over there heading right for it. He told me just to stay on the road, and hopefully the tornado in front of us would change course. It was far enough away. There was a loud roaring sound that was getting closer and closer to our location. The thunder was crashing, and the lightning was continuously flashing like a strobe light. It was overwhelming, but I had to keep myself engaged as we were directly in the middle of four tornadoes. The tornado in front of us was not changing course. I told Josh, and he agreed. We saw an exit with a bridge ahead we could hide under. From the air fell a tractor right in front of us. I swerved to miss it. There was debris everywhere. I saw the exit and pulled off. We all jumped out of the car and got under the bridge. We heard the roars of a freight train descending upon us. I saw our car get pulled backwards and leave the ground. It was engulfed by those extreme winds that are now right on top of us. We all hung into something as tight as we could. The wind picked us up and our feet were flying through the air. We just had to hold on long enough to get through this. The wind slowed down finally. Our feet returned to the ground. We had survived, and now we knew that tornadoes were an Oklahoma thing. Our car was gone, but we had our lives. And that's really all that matters. We got a rental car and made it to Arizona eventually. If you're in a strange location, 
pay attention to what the location is known for. You might just find out in a surprising way. We heard the roars of the freak. We heard the... We... We, we heard... We told her that we were just out for a walk. And that there's nothing going on. We were taken out of the vehicle and walked up a steep incline with the bag still over our heads. We finally stopped. Shit. We were taken out of the vehicles. We were thrown from the cliff. We are A few of us were driving... Oops. So we're driving to Las Vegas from Ridgecrest. Shit. So we were driving and saw other cars around. Oops. Signs of Sybil... We had heard weather reports of... We had heard... Re we had heard... But he looked over to where the rest stop was and he saw even bigger... But he looked over where the rest stop... But he looked over to where the rest stop was and he saw an even bigger tornado. But he looked over to where the west... West, the west stop. 